Hello everyone. Today we're going to read a story called My Wounded Island. <clears throat> my name is Amarvalut. In my language, in Yupiat, it means the song of the waves. It was my grandfather who named me when I was a baby. Every time I cried, it made him think of the sea. I love my name, but I no longer love the sea. The sea scares me now. The sea is bewitched by an evil creature. Hmm. A creature. The creature has made the sea a monster that is slowly devouring our island, the island of Sarah Chef. Hmm. It's a very small island. On a map of the world, on a classroom wall, you'd think Sarah Chef was a speck, a minuscule dot of nothing at all an ink stain near the Arctic Circle between Russia and Alaska. Hmm, look how small the island is. Hmm. There's the creature with the monster that she's talking about. Hmm. Grandfather reminds me that this island is the land of our people, the Inupiat. Our ancestors have lived here for a very long time. We no longer live in igloos in the winter. Now we live in modern little wooden houses, like one big family in the island's only village, Shismaref. But just like in the old days, the men still hunt bearded seal, walrus, elk, and caribou. Hmm. You see? I think that might be a walrus or a seal. Interesting. Every summer, we leave the island to settle on the mainland. My father and my grandfather built a camp on the tundra on the banks of the Great Serpentine River. It's there they hunt caribou. When they are doing that, my mother and I fish or pick berries. And where's the caribou? Do you see the caribou? Yeah, there it is. That's the caribou. You can see they're fishing and picking berries. Hmm. Now, almost everyone has a snowmobile. But Grandfather prefers his dog sled. In the past, he used to take me out on it even though I was scared of the dogs, especially the one leading the team. But today, it's the invisible creature hidden in the waves that frightens me the most. Because of this monster, we can no longer go on the pack ice. See, there's the snowmobiles, and there's the dog sled. But they can't go on the pack ice. I wonder why. I'm scared the creature will come and devour the village in the night, and our house will plunge into the sea. Sometimes I can't fall asleep. The slightest cracking sound frightens me. I can't ever forget the fury of the sea. Once, huge waves so high and so strong almost swallowed the entire village. Wow. That is one mean creature. Why is this creature trying to hurt our island? Why isn't the goddess of the sea Sedna protecting us? Grandfather says she can do nothing. Our island is wounded, gnawed away bit by bit by a monster that is unknown to the gods, goddesses, and spirits who looked after our people in ancient times. This creature 
is greedy and invisible. Hmm. While I'm reading this story, I want you to think about what this creature could possibly be. I wonder. Its powers are so mighty that even winter is retreating early from the island. The pack ice that used to protect us from storms only brushes lightly against the island. It no longer dares to come near. The seal hunters can't venture out there on foot or snowmobile. It's too dangerous. Now they use motorboats. Well, you see, there's a lot of cracks in the ice, eh? Boulders and hunks of metal were brought to the shore to form a dike to protect us. But nothing can resist this creature. It takes its strength from spirits who are unknown to our people. Outsiders who are studying this monster came to Shishmareth. They explained to us that other areas of the world are also victims of the creature. Hmm. They taught us that this tragedy has been caused partly by humans. That the climate is changing, the earth is warming, <sighs> hmm. and this heat gives the creature all of its destructive force. We watched a film that showed what is happening to islands like ours. Because of the warmer temperatures, glaciers are melting and the water is rising. Our island, like all the others that are too close to sea level, could disappear under the sea. Hmm. Since we learned our fate, I have often had a nightmare. I dream that our island is an immense sand castle. I am inside and it's gently crumbling, drawing me into the waves. I see the creature's huge eyes and hear its loud cackles of laughter. <laughs> I try to escape by flying away, holding on to the feathers of my spirit animal totem. But the creature holds me down by my feet. Hmm. That darn creature, eh? In a few days, our house will be moved to the center of the island, near where the rest of the houses that were too close to the sea now sit. A crane sets the houses on enormous skis, and a tractor tows them away from the shore until they are safely sheltered from the creature's waves. But sooner or later, we will all have to leave our island for good. Hmm. See, there's the tractor pulling away their house on skis, eh? Hmm. Where will we go? Everyone is asking that question. Grandfather says we will need to find a land where it will be possible to continue to live as we did before. Others speak of moving to Nome, a big city on the mainland. They think life will be easier and more comfortable there, that finally there will be running water in their homes. My father would like us to work together to build a new village on the mainland, but it would cost too much, say the people who could help. Hmm, what are they to do? My parents are still hesitating, but Grandfather has decided. He does not want to go to Nome. He is scared we will lose our traditions in a city that knows nothing of our customs. Like many, he would prefer to live on our summer camp on the tundra. What worries Grandfather the most is that this creature will make not only our island disappear, but also the memories of our people. 
Mm. Okay. <clears throat> so, what do you think this creature could be? Well, I think this creature represents an environmental justice problem. Do you know what environmental justice is? Well, environmental justice is the merging of an environmental issue and a social justice issue. Environmental issues like climate change, uh, pollution, deforestation, or the loss of local wildlife often occurs to communities less fortunate than us. In some communities, um, environmental issues happen so often that it changes their way of life. And in many cases, these communities don't have the resources to deal with them. For a Marveluk, yeah, for Marveluk and the people who lived on the island of uh, Sarashev, <clears throat> for example, the changes to sea ice had a huge effect in their daily lives. Communities that have to uh, deal with environmental issues like, like those um, are being forced to move, uh, even though they don't have the money or the resources to do so, because it is much more expensive to live in cities. Also, it is no fun to move away from your home, is it? But for communities less fortunate, that is the reality they have to deal with. Um, for people who already live in cities like, like us, <clears throat> this is not an issue that we think about because we don't experience, every day, experience it every day, right? So what, in, what environmental justice is, is uh, it's a, it is the belief that everyone, uh, no matter the language they speak, the culture they have, the money they make, or the way they look, everyone, everyone should have the right to live happily without the worry of an environmental issue impacting their lives. <clears throat>